about to hear a romantic drama, The Difference Between, adapted from a story in Street and Smith's Love Story magazine, featuring the love story girl in the role of Marcel Clendy. This is the love story of Marcel Clendy, who works in Flightman's mammoth dress establishment. As our first scene opens, we find Marcel talking to Linda Carr, another sales girl, during a lull in the usual Monday morning rush of customers. Oh, Linda, you didn't say that to Tommy. You couldn't have been so mean. Tommy knows as well as we do that if he talks you into marrying him, you can't keep your job at Flightman. He knows it's a rule of the firm that they won't keep a girl if she marries one of the other employees. I know, Linda, but I wish... Don't be a sap, Marcel. You earn almost twice what Tommy does. And if you marry him, you'll be the one to leave, not him. So I told him if he has a decent hair in his head, he'll let you alone. Oh, Linda, I wish you hadn't. I'm afraid you just messed up everything. Well, it's about time somebody did. Say, get a load of that guy over there with the boss, will you? Boy, I could go for somebody like that. Who's he, I wonder? Oh, I don't know. They've been standing around all morning. Mm -mm, He sure got what it takes. Say, I think the boss wants you. Boy, are you lucky. Oh, Miss Clemby, uh, can I speak to you for a moment? Oh, yes, Mr. Cross. As you know, Miss Clemby, we make all the dresses for the models for the Silver Frost Cigarette Company ad. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is Carew Dane, the artist who does the ad. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Dane? How do you do? Uh, Mr. Dane's been looking for a new model, then. I think he's found her. Uh, How about her, Dane? It might be well to let Miss Clemby decide, I think. Well, uh, how about it, Miss Clemby? Well, I don't quite understand. A Dane wants you to pose for him. Oh. Mr. Flightman told him uh, you said something about quitting here. And if you go to work for Dane, it's a swell job and a swell salary. But, well, I don't know anything about posing. Oh, you don't have to. All you'll have to do is to wear the dresses that Mr. Cord here designs for you. I'll do the rest. Silver Frost cigarettes only want girls that look like junior leaguers. If you once work for them, you can always get another job when you're finished there. Well, what do you say? Will you do it? All right. I'll do it. Good. Now, if you'll come to the advertising offices, I'll sign you up for a long series of pictures. Tommy, I thought this was to be a celebration because I got a new job with a swell salary and, well, now we can begin saving to get married. When I saw you talking to Cord and Carew Dane, well, Marcel, I knew you went to work for Silver Frost because Dane draws the ad. Tommy. Every girl in New York is crazy about Carew Dane. They rave about his money, his looks, his artistic ability. And another thing, what man wants to see his girl's face spread over every billboard in the country? Oh, Tommy, don't be like that. Do try to see that this is all the means to just one thing, that you and I can get married without any strings. Oh, Mm -hmm. sure, sure, I suppose that's right. After all, with the money you'll be making, we can get a pretty nice apartment and maybe a car sometime. Well, now you're talking. Marcel, it may please you to know that I was right about you. Right? Yes, the new Silver Frost girl is becoming quite a sensation. Oh. How are you coming along with Tommy? Well, I I was going to speak to you about Tommy. You know, Mr. Dane, Tommy has quite a gift for wearing clothes. Could you give him a job now and then posing in these ads? He looks just as good as the society men that come up here. Well, we might have a try at it. But I'm not sure it'll work out. You see, the men in these ads have to have a certain air. 
The air of men who belong. Oh. I don't belong, and you gave me the job. You'd belong anywhere. But anyway, bring Tommy along. Any man you marry ought to be able to do anything. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry, Marcel. About Tommy, I mean. But I was afraid it wouldn't work out. Oh, I'm sorry, too. I... It's hard to explain, Marcel, and I know you'll think that I'm not being fair. But he just hasn't got what it takes. He, he's terribly good-looking. Yes, he is good-looking. But his face is weak, You Marcel. mustn't criticize Tommy to me. Why are you doing this thing, Marcel? It's going to make you miserable all your life. You're always going to be the one who gives. And the time won't be long before Tommy will always want you to give. Oh, Marcel, can't you see? You're wrong. Tommy isn't like that. It's just that he's always had hard luck, never had the proper chance, and it's made him bitter and afraid. That's why he needs someone like me. Someone who understands. Someone who loves him. Very well. We'll let it go at that. I'm sophisticated enough not to argue with a woman in love. But I'm sure enough of myself to bet on this. How about you? Are you sure enough of that boy to take up my bet that he wouldn't resent anything that might happen to you provided you don't lose this job? This job that's better than his. Well, how dare you talk that way? Of course I'll bet on Tommy. Very well. I'll bet you a thousand dollars that Tommy Kent won't resent anything that might happen to you within the next few days, provided you don't lose your job with Silver Frost. Oh, a thousand dollars, that that's much too much to bet. I couldn't possibly pay it if I lost unless I took it out of what Tommy and I are saving together. But of course you aren't going to lose. Oh. And think what my thousand could do for that marriage fund. Anyway, you've taken the bet, and you can't Welsh on it if you're a sport. I won't. All right. I think we'd better get to work. We've a whole hour before the light goes. Well, I'm ready. Oh, uh, by the way, I'm going to start work tomorrow on a new picture with an outdoor background. And I think I'll do it out at my summer place on Long Island. Yes. The others are coming by train, but you can drive out with me if you'd like to. Oh, swell. So I love the country in the spring. I think your house is beautiful. Well, what do you suppose is keeping the others? I thought you said they'd be here by 3 o'clock and it's half past now. Well, even if they don't show up, it won't make much difference. I think it's going to storm any minute. We couldn't do any work anyway. Oh, what did I tell you? Oh. What do you mean, even if the others don't show up? Why, just what I said. Oh. Well, it looks like quite a storm. Marcel, I'm going to be frank. I never did expect the others. I never intended to do any pictures. All I wanted was to have you out here all to myself. Oh. I hadn't counted on this storm, but it makes it better because now you can't possibly get away. The wind and rain make it absolutely foolhardy to drive a car, even if I intended to drive, which I don't. You can't keep me here like this against my will. You wouldn't dare. You certainly can't walk 25 miles to town in this weather. No, but you wouldn't dare keep me away from your telephone, and I'm going to call Tommy. Oh, Really? I'm going to tell him what you're trying to do to me, and you can't stop me. Tommy will come. He'll come and get me. Tommy isn't afraid of any silly old storm. He'll get here somehow. Well, phone if you like, but it's useless. <gasps> Tommy won't come. As a matter of fact, he already knows you're here. Oh, that's a lie. Very well. Call him. Number, please. Operator, get me New York. Watkins 76365. I wish you wouldn't do this, Marcel. Hello? Tommy. Tommy, this is Marcel. I'm out at the Dane place on Long Island. I'm here alone with Peru Dane. Tommy, you've got to come Yes, up. yes, Marcel, I know. And honest to heaven, I didn't like it when Dane told me he was going to take you out there. Tommy. But if it's part of your job, I guess I haven't any right to butt in. I suppose if I'm going to have a model for a wife, I'll, I'll just have to take but it. But, Tommy, I'm a... Dane's a decent sort. You'll be all right. Goodbye, Tommy. Well, you see... I understand it all now. It's that bet, and you've won. But it's pretty hard for a girl to discover that the man she loves is a weakling. The man she might have loved is a cat. Listen, Marcel, please believe me when I say I'm sorry. Sorry that things turned out the way they have. Sorry? <laughs> I truly hope that Tommy wouldn't let you down. Yes, I love you even enough for that. 
Not because I'm a self-sacrificing saint, but because you are. Now, if you put on your coat and hat... Where are we going? I'm going to drive you back to town. But in this storm... The blazes with the storm. minute. I'm Marcel. Come in. Oh, thanks, Tommy. I thought you were out of Dane's place. Well... How come you got back so early? You didn't have a row with him, did you? Oh, Tommy, I've got something to tell you. I've done a terrible thing. You see, dear, Carew Dane has entirely the wrong idea about us. Well, about you. He, he thinks you're afraid I might lose my job and that you'd stand for anything that would help me to keep it. He taunted me into betting on it. What? Well, he's got a nerve. When you said over the phone tonight that it was all right for me to be out there, you you lost me the bet, Tommy. Oh, of course, I know you didn't know or you never would have said what you did. So I've got to pay Dane $1,000, Tommy, or lose my self-respect. Oh, don't you see, Tommy? What? You're planning to pay Dane $1,000 out of our account? Yes, dear, I've got to. I, I know it practically wipes out our account, but I've got to. Well, you can't, that's all. Oh, please don't be like that. Don't let me down, Tommy. Let me take that money. I'll work hard to pay it back. Honestly, I will. You can't draw out the money, Marcel, because there isn't that much there. What? I drew it out yesterday to make a down payment on a car. Tommy. Oh, you needn't look so horrified. It's no worse than what you did, making cheap bets on me as if I were a racehorse. Tommy, can't you see I had to make that bet? Think what it would have implied if I didn't make it. Well, you made the bet. You can get yourself out of it. I had just as much right to that money as you did, and I spent it for something that would give us pleasure. Why, you gambled it. Yes. Yes, I gambled and lost. And what I lost, you'll never even know. You'll never even get. Here's your ring, Tommy. Marcel. Maybe you can get enough on that to finish paying for the car. Hello. Yes, Marcel? Before I start posing, I've got something to tell you. Yes? I can't pay that bet. I find I haven't got that much money in the bank. Oh, good heavens, Marcel. Is that what makes you look so white? Do you really believe I care about that money? I just wanted to make you see Tommy as he really is. The rest of it can go to the devil. I gave Tommy back his ring. And if you love me, you won't ask me why, because I'll never explain. If I love you. Marcel, listen Will you marry me? I'll marry you any time you say. You have been listening to a romantic drama featuring the Love Story Girl and presented with the permission of Street and Smith, publishers of Love Story magazine.